everybody, it's Wendy, and today we are going to make a necklace using a bunch of different stuff, but the main component in this necklace is, are, is going to be these beads. So these are absolutely some of the prettiest beads that I think I have ever seen. They are a ceramic painted, hand-painted bead, and they're just absolutely stunning. Um, these are available on my website right now. Um, they're sold individually because they are 22 millimeters. They're pretty big. And so, you know, I didn't want to make it to where somebody had to buy a whole strand if they didn't want to. But they're just absolutely gorgeous. And they're going to be kind of the star of the show in this necklace. So um, I'm going to show you everything else you're going to need. It's a multi-strand necklace, so it requires a bunch of stuff. But um, you can use anything you have. Any big bead that you have. Or any bead actually it doesn't even have to be a big bead so these are just what I wanted to use so I've got the beads here and then I've got um, one of these flowers from my website again this is the 22 millimeter these are the hand-painted lucite flowers they're very this is the beautiful one it looks really pretty with these beads so if you can see it's picking up kind of all of the same colors that are in the beads so this one is available right now on my website um, and then these other colors are as well this is the 22 millimeter so if you get on there you're going to look for there are categories if you hit shop entire selection or collection then there will be categories and these are under the hand painted lucite flowers under jewelry making supplies so go to jewelry making supplies Go to hand-painted lucite flowers and you will find this specific one it is on there um, so this is the 22 millimeter these are the 14 millimeter and i'm using a blue or a turquoise and a plum color in those these are the 14 millimeters they're on there as well and this is the tiny tulip and i'm using this gold color in the tiny tulip okay um also what did I do with them? Okay, these tinies are on there. These are just called tinies, the tiny, <laughs> because they are very tiny, and we're going to be using one of them as well. And this, I believe, is the copper one. So these are all hand-painted as well as these beads. I didn't paint the beads, but I did paint the flowers. Okay, so we're going to need all of those. Then I've got some tiger eye. Um, this is like a multicolored tiger eye that I got at the... Um, intergalactic bead and gem show and oh my goodness these are beautiful i loved because they had the reds the blues i don't know if you can really tell on the camera but this is kind of like a greenish tinted one um there's red in here and they just picked up the colors i thought of these beads and so i'm wanting to use some of these for accents so i have an eight millimeter and a six millimeter i believe these are six yeah i think so so there those are i'm going to be using those you're going to need some sort of chandelier um, connector. So I'm using this one. I looked in my stock for my website. I don't have any antique copper <laughs> chandelier findings, so I'm going to have to get some. I'm really lacking in my antique copper um, as far as my website and in just my personal stash too. I just don't have very much. So you're going to need two of some sort of connector, two to one connector. That's what I'm going to be using. Okay, so that's that. I have two leaf charms. Um, you can use anything. Like I said, these are just what I may use these to dangle down from the flower. Not sure yet. Um, I have two of these alloy filigree bead caps. These are available on my website as well. And you'll see here in a minute why I've got these. I'm going to layer a bunch of bead caps. Um, I have these antique. There's an antique bronze one. I have these um, antique copper bead caps. These are also available on my website. These are the five petal antique copper bead caps. I think I have four petal on there too, but these are the five. I've got two crimp beads, two clamshell covers, um, two just, these are closed rings. I'm just going to use these to put our lobster on at the end and to hook it on to, I believe, because I'm going to be using some leather. So I'm going to need to be able to loop it through and tie a knot so i've got a lobster claw clasp get these back in here these little trays too come from the dollar tree everybody always asks me that they're from the dollar tree they come in a package of like eight or ten or something um that's what i that's where i get them 
Um, these are just some fire polish um, spacers that I got on clearance when Hobby Lobby was clearancing a bunch of stuff out. And I may use some of them. I'm not sure yet exactly what I'm going to use. I've got some 4 millimeter fire polish beads in like a copper. Actually, what color is this? This is the bronze, um, but it looks copper to me. <laughs> and so I'm going to be using those. I do have some tiny Swarovski. These are three millimeter um, vitriol medium Swarovski uh, bicones. And I'm going to be using them on the bottoms of the flowers, I think. I have some leather. This leather is from, shoot, now I've forgotten the name of the leather place. It's just slipped my mind. I will link it in the description box below. I bought a bunch of this leather and I really like everything that I got. There were some beautiful colors. I actually did an unboxing. And I'll link that in the description box below. But that site had really good prices and really seems to be great quality leather. So we're going to be using some of that. Um, and I have some of this antique copper beading chain. This is available on my website and we're going to be using some of that. And I have a noodle to do, tie my barrel knots with. I'm going to say just up front, I'm no expert at barrel knots, so we're going to give it a try. But I don't know how well it's going to work out. I have some copper jump rings, some copper head pins and eye pins and my jewelry supply or my jewelry tools and my glasses believe it or not I remembered my glasses before I got halfway through the video um I have a couple bead bugs bead stoppers these are great they're found at Joann's Michael's just about anywhere you want to get them and I think that's everything so get your stuff together if you want to make this necklace and come right on back and we'll get started okay so the first thing we're going to do is make our flower this is going to be our little flower Focal. So I'm going to grab out all these and I'm going to cut open this package of bicones. I hate these packages they put these in. These are actually on clearance at Hobby Lobby right now, or at least they were at the Hobby Lobby in Ashland, Kentucky when I was there the other day. Um, and these were $6.99 marked down to $1.74. So you might be watching your Hobby Lobby because all, we all know Swarovski is going by the way. We're not going to have any more Swarovski and so they're starting to clearance it all out. Okay, so there we have a few little bicones out here. We've got our flowers. We need our bead caps. Okay, we'll be doing some layering with those and these. And I actually had another bead cap that I put out here. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to use that one. Possibly. That one's not on my website, but I might use it. I don't know. I can't decide. We'll see how it looks. Okay. So, um, one other thing that you are going to need is some sort of clear bead. Like, um, I'm using some little, let me grab them. I forgot to grab them out. I'm sorry. Um, these are just some little clear seed beads that came in between other beads <laughs> on a strand. And I'll show you why you're going to need them, but you will need a few of those here in a minute. Okay, so go ahead and grab your, you're going to need an eye pin first, okay? And what we're going to do, let me think of how I want to do this. I'm going to take this one, this um, bead cap, and flatten it. So I just take it, flatten it out. I'm going to use it on the bottom down here. So I want it to be kind of flatter. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on one, two, three. No, I need to put this on first. I'm sorry. That needs to go in first, yeah. Then about one, two, three, four of these, and then let's try our flower on. The point, what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to make it to where this hangs down, and see, if you don't have your, um, if you don't have your little clear beads in there, it's just going to be right up here, and you're not going to be able to see it. So you can't really see that from, you know. So what I want to do is I want to take these seed beads and it pushes the head pin down far enough that the little bead cap will show. So I'm going to do one, let's see, two, I'm going to do five, three, and these are just little six millimeter or uh, six O seed beads, four and five. So, okay, five like that. Now I'm going to put my flower on. And as you can see, it pushes this down so that it's going to show when it hangs on, you know, the pendant. It's going to show. I'm trying to decide if I want to go up one or not. And I think, actually, I'm just going to leave it like that. 
because I like it being down just a little bit. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bead cap and I'm going to put it on. And I'm just going to kind of mold it around my bead, just like that. Okay, around my flower, I mean. Might try, nope, I do not like those on there. They just don't look good. Okay, so I'm going to put this one facing down, just like that. I'm going to turn this one and face it up. And I'm going to put one of these bicones in here. Just like that. And you know, actually, okay, sorry, I'm going to take this apart. Design change. <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> this is how I design. I'm going to put this little bicone on first on here. Yeah, and then four of these guys. Two, three. And one more and that way if that bottom one shows a little bit it's just gonna be a pretty little bicone but I forgot to put my thing on didn't I sorry guys just hang in there with me I mean we'll get it it's gonna look good when we're done okay then I'm gonna put the bicone on and the four seed beads okay that's better yeah that's gonna be cute okay now we're gonna put our flower back on sorry I just when I pulled those up in there, I was like, oh, that would be pretty because it would kind of give it a little sparkle if it catches the light, you know, in somebody's eye or something. Okay, now we're going to put this guy back on. Yep, just like that. We're going to do this guy facing down, this guy facing up, and I actually may do two bicones on here. Let me look and see. See what two of them yeah I'm gonna do two on there because I like the sparkle that that gives okay so now we don't have much wire left over I may actually not have enough to do the two bicones I may just have to do one or I could take one of those off uh, I really like that kind of hanging down low enough yeah I'm just gonna do the one bicone. So let's take that one off just because I'm running out of <laughs> running out of wire there. Bend this at a 90 degree angle. I'm not even gonna have to cut anything off of it. It's pretty much small enough already. And then I'm just gonna whoa, I just took my pliers off and my camera thing just about tipped over. I am sorry guys, hold on just a second. <laughs> Man, I didn't realize they were they weighed that much. They were holding that up. Okay, there we go. Bottle of lotion will fix it. <laughs> okay, take your round nose pliers and roll a loop back. Just about dumped you guys right over, didn't I? Okay. So there we have it. There is our really pretty flower component partway finished. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, we're going to make the dangly part on the bottom. So you're going to need another eye pin. And I think what we're going to do here, what are we going to do here? We're going to put this one on net first, then one of these seed beads, or two. Yep. Then this guy. Okay. Then we're going to layer these two. So I'm going to do the red one, a, don't want to do a bead cap, no, I need to do a couple of these, the red one, um, two of the little um, seed beads, and the blue one, let's see how that looks, that looks good, but I think I'm going to take one of those off and see how that looks, does that look better? It's totally your own creative control. So actually, I think I'm going to do this guy. Let me put the camera back. Okay. And then a bead cap. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe this guy. Nope, that covers the bead cap. So let's do a seed bead and then this guy. Still kind of covers the bead cap. And this is what I do with these flowers. I just kind of play around. Now that looks kind of cute. And find what I think looks good. You know, I layer bead caps. I layer all different kinds of stuff. All right. And these little seed beads, you know, if you find that your bead caps are covered up, or actually I don't think that bead cap's going to be able to show. It's just going to have to 
yeah, because I want these to be, I don't want it to be too long or it's going to look weird. Okay, this one I'm going to layer right on as well. Yeah, see how pretty that is though? You just layer them up and they're beautiful. Now I will put a bead cap on top and probably a bicone. Whoops. These bicones are really pretty too, this vitriol light. That one's not wanting to fit on there. There we go. And this is actually going to hang from this. So I'm just trying to make sure that I have it like I want it. I mean, I don't want it to be too much. And I want it to be pretty. I don't want it to look like, you know, I tried to just shove too much on there. So I may just go with that. I think I will, actually. I don't, I don't think I'm going to use that one. Okay, so we're going to do... 90 degree angle here. Actually, I'm going to take this bicone off too. I just don't want it to be too long. So let's put that bead cap on. That's cute. And then we're going to do the loop. So 90 degree angle. Go ahead and trim it. And then we'll roll our loop back. Just like that. Okay, so here's what we've got. I'm going to go ahead and hook this together and I'm not going to use um, any type of jump ring. I'm just going to hook them directly to each other. Oops. Just like this. Make sure that's closed up really good because it will come out if it's not. Okay. And there's what we have. And I'm kind of not liking this now. So here's what I'm going to do. Rather than take everything completely apart, <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to open up my eye pin. And I'm going to take my pliers and just straighten that loop out that's on the end of the eye pin. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to take these off. Now, I may have trouble getting that bicone off unless I can get it totally straight here. I think I might be able to. So you can do this if you, you know, like I really kind of hate to take this up totally apart. I may have to, though, if I can't get this bicone off. Because I don't really want to break the bicone. Actually, the bicone already looks like it's cracked for some reason. I don't know how that happened, but... Yeah, if there's any little tiny <laughs> bend... <laughs> in the wire, the bicone will not come off. It's got to be straight. Come on, little bicone, get off there. There we go. He flew, but I'll find him. There he is. <laughs> okay, we got him off. All right, I'm going to put this back on. I just didn't like the way it was hanging too low. It just, it looked funny. And I don't want it to look funny. So it definitely needs to be kind of like right there, I think. But I may actually put the bicone below it. If I can get another one back on now. I don't know if I can. Maybe not. Let's try it and see. Okay. Well, for heaven's sakes. This is what happens when you are filming. Stuff like this happens. But I like to... I mean, sometimes I have to put things together... And see how it looks before I decide if I'm going to keep it or not. And if it looks weird when I get it all put together, I just take it apart. Okay, I'm not going to be able to get the bicone on there. It's going to have issues. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and make the loop. It'll be fine. So I'm just going to make the loop 90 degrees. I'll have to trim this a little bit because it's going to be a little bit smaller. There we go. 
and then I will take my plier and roll this back. And I'm just going to roll this up, even if it kind of coils a little bit, because I want it to be tight. And it won't hurt a thing if it coils. It'll just be more, a little more secure. Okay. So there's what we've got. That's going to look a lot better than it was the, the, <laughs> it was there a second ago. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Alrighty. Now let's put this back on here. Yeah, that's going to look better. It just was too long. I don't know. It, it looked funny. And so that's what I do. If, you know, I put something together, I don't like it, I just take it apart. Not a big deal. You don't have to, you know, worry. People get so uptight and they're like, I'm terrified to, you know, just, just try it. If it doesn't work, just take it apart. I mean, you can always change it up. Okay. Let's see. Is that closed? Yes, that's closed. Okay, so does that look better? It does. Yeah, that looks better closer up to the flower. Okay. All right, so there's our dangle. Now, we're going to make a couple more little dangles. Yes, believe it or not, we are. <laughs> and they're going to hang right here off the end of this, and I'm going to hook them on with a jump ring. So let me get my little jump ring here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of eye pins... Let's see here. I just have long eye pins. I really need some shorter ones. I do save the wire that I cut off and use it for other things. But Okay, so I know that I want my leaf to be on here. So actually I'm going to use eye pins and not head pins. Because I do want my leaf to dangle from it. So where are my leaves? Let me grab those really quickly. Okay, so here are my leaves. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a tiny little, one of these little um, bicones cones, if it'll fit on here. I hope it does. I don't have any ball head pins in copper. So I would have used them if I did. Whoops, that one was going to fit and I dropped it. Um, but I don't have any in copper. All I have are other colors. Okay, so I'm just going to put that little bicone cone on there. And I know this seems like a gigantic waste of wire, but like I told you, I do use it for other things. I save the pieces that I clip off. Um, I don't have anything else to use right now that's smaller. So I'm just going to clip it here. Um, set that aside and roll a loop back. Just like this. Okay, and then I'm just going to hook my leaf onto one end of this. So that's a little leaf. It's just going to go right on, directly on there. Okay, now the other one, the other leaf, I want to be just a little longer. I want it to hang kind of like this. So I'm going to take my same thing, eye pin. I'm going to do three little bicones. So I have three that'll go on here. <laughs> I should. Certainly one more will go on. They have different size holes, obviously. There we go. Three little bicones. I'm going to do the same thing. 90 degrees. Cut this off. A little bit more and roll the loop back. Okay, I'm gonna open this up and put my leaf on. And that's gonna make this one two, three millimeter bicone lengths smaller than that one. <laughs> so when it hangs, it's just going to hang just a tad bit longer, which I think will be really nice. So we're going to take a jump ring. And I'm going to put both of these on the jump ring. Just like this. I'd kind of like them. Let me see this. I would kind of like them to hang mirroring each other. Okay, so put this one on here. 
this is fiddly, <laughs> but I really think it's going to be cute. So come on now, there we go. Get a hold of it with your plier, it's a little bit easier. And then I'm just going to hook it right on here. And this is an oval dump ring, so hopefully it'll hang. They'll hang kind of side by side here in a second. Well, that's my cutter. Goodness, I'm really bad to do that. Even though I've marked my cutter with washi tape, um, I'm going to have to color the complete handles on these. I'm going to have to just dunk them in paint or something because I always do that. Pick up my cutter thinking it's my, it's my thing. Okay, so there is our little flower focal that we're going to put on our necklace. And I'm sorry that took so long, but like I said, sometimes you just have to take things apart, look at them, and... You know, if you don't like it, do it a different way. So that's our focal. That's what's going to hang down from this piece right here, this um, wire. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my wire. Now, I have not cut the other end. I'm not sure how long I want it to be, but I'm going to go ahead and put this on it first. Okay? And then I'm just going to bead on, mainly I'm going to use the tiger eye beads, I believe, on this guy. And I'm going to try to put them color, like here's two red. So let me see if these little bikins will fit on here. I bet they won't, but it would be really cool if they would. They probably won't. They're teeny tiny. Teeny tiny little holes. And this beading chain is very small, but it's not quite that small, I don't think. No. Okay, so I'm going to try these. I don't know if these will fit on it either. They may not as well. I have some other spacers up here if they don't in the fire polish one. Yeah, these are too small too. Okay, so we'll put those aside. Grab the fire polish because I know it'll fit. Here we go. And I'm going to put two fire polish beads first. Actually, I think I'm going to take a bead cap and put it on backwards like this. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I kind of like the way when you do this, when you put these little bead caps backwards like this, it just cups the focal piece. So if you look here, see how it's going to just kind of cup that? It's really kind of cute when you do, I like to do that. Okay, and then I'm going to do a little fire polish bead on either side. I know the fire polish will fit on here. I may have to trim this chain into a point. Sometimes it gets a little frayed when you um, cut it, and it just needs trimmed into a point. I don't know if that helped or not. <laughs> it still looks kind of frayed. It is. Goodness. Okay. Let me cut a little bit more off. There we go. That should do it. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to put these two fire polish beads on. See how they look. They're very pretty. And then I'm going to do a bead cap facing away from my fire polish bead. One of my eight millimeter tiger eye in this kind of reddish shade. These are so pretty. And a bead cap cupping my fire polish bead or my uh, tiger eye bead. Okay, just like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Is that the correct way? Yeah, facing away from the fire polish bead. Then my tiger eye. Then a bead cap facing the tiger eye. Okay. And then twist this chain. This chain twists up really easy. Oh, there's a jump ring on there. No wonder. It's acting weird. Okay, there we go. Okay, and that's what we have right there. Really pretty. Okay. Now, I think I will do another fire polish bead. On each end. And then I'm going to try to pull out one of the yellowish looking tiger's eye. Now, do I want to 
stagger these with the sixes and the eights. I think I do. So I'm going to do the yellow sixes. And I'm not going to use bead caps on the sixes. Just to break things up a little because I don't want it to be all just bead caps and beads. I want to kind of have a little variety. Wow, that's pretty. Okay. Now I'm going to do... Do I want to do more fire polish in between? I think I do, just for continuity's sake. Let's do another fire polish on each side. Just like this. Then we're going to do a bead cap facing away from the fire polish bead on each side. And then I'm going to try to pull out some of the, a couple of the greener shade, eight millimeter tiger eye. I don't know if you can really tell on the, you kind of can see it there. It does have kind of a greenish tint to it. They're really pretty. And I was kind of worried about not having um, any of the teal down in this layer, but we're going to be using those ceramic beads here in a minute, and that teal is going to be drawn up using them, so I think it'll be fine. Oops, this needs to go this way. Put our on, our fire polish bead. If I can get it in there, come on now. Okay. Put our other bead cap on. Fire polish bead. Okay. And then I'm going to do two of the smaller in the yellow again. This is turning out really. The colors are so pretty. Okay, now let's take a look at it. Got a mess on my bead mat as usual. You all know me. I'm a mess when it comes to, <laughs> I just can't keep it all neat. Okay. Oops. Okay, so let's take a look and just see. Let's put our chandelier component up here. Where'd they go? Here they are. And I just want to see, I mean, this definitely needs to be up here quite a ways more because you want your inner layer, <laughs> whatever, however you want to say that, you want your inner layer to have some room to hang as well. So I'm just going to keep on. I'm going to do another fire polish on each side. And the reason I go side to side on here, a lot of people, I know it slows, kind of slows down the process of making your necklace. Like I could just beat up this one side, then beat up the other side and it would be quicker. But I always, if I don't do it this way, I always end up missing a bead or having something on the other side that didn't come out right. And it's just not worth it. <laughs> so I'm going to do a fire polish, the bead cap facing away from it. And then I'm going to try to pull out two of the redder shades again. That's these. Even though they're kind of hard to see, it does have a really deep kind of maroon look to it. I'm going to do the other bead cap. And the fire polish. And my yellow. Okay, and same thing on the other side. Okay, so over here we need our bead cap. I've already got my fire polish. So I'm putting on my bead cap, my reddish bead, and my bead cap, my yellow tinted bead. And my fire polish. Just like that. All right, now let's look. I still think we need, yeah, well, it's going to come across here. So we don't really need too much more going on, but I do need probably one more section on either side. So I've got my fire polish. I need a bead cap. 
one of my greenish tinted tiger eye. Bead cap and greenish tinted. Wait a minute. Now see what I've done here? I've got a yellow in here and I don't over here. Do I, am I supposed to have? I am. No. Hang on, guys. Let me look at this. Yeah, I've messed this up. I've done this backwards. So that's what happens if I don't <laughs> have to be really careful. Because then you finish off your, your necklace or whatever and you've beaded it wrong. And then you're really frustrated <laughs> because you have to take it all apart. So I need the yellow bead first on this side. I'm glad I caught that because I would have been really aggravated if I had to take the whole thing apart after this video. All right, there's that. Now I'm going to need my bead cap and my big bead. So that's why I do the back and forth. I know it seems like it takes longer and it may, but trust me, in the end, you're going to be glad when you did it right and didn't have to take your necklace apart. Because I have done it many, many times. Okay, so we're going to put our bead cap. So we've got our yellow bead fire polish. Same thing over here. Yellow bead fire polish, bead cap, big bead, and bead cap. All right. I'm going to do one more fire polish on each side. And then I think we're going to be ready to go ahead and hook this onto our chandelier finding. So there it is. Okay, now I am going to line this up just like this. Here's a pro tip. <laughs> line it up. Make sure everything matches. Mine does. And I'm going to pull this through so I don't waste a bunch of chain. And on this end, I'm going to go ahead and put my clamshell cover. And then we're going to put our crimp bead. Now, this crimp bead, you do not have to crimp down pretty. It's not going to show. So just go ahead and slide it on there. Just slide it up to the end and just crimp it down. You do want to crimp it tightly. I mean, you don't want to cut your chain, but you want to crimp it kind of tightly. You want to pull on it, make sure it's secure. It's not going to come undone. If, if it's going to come undone, you want it to come undone now while you're making the necklace. So you'll know. So pull on it pretty good. And then just close it up. Okay. And there is one end finished. Let's do the same to the other end. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this because now I know that, you know, I'm down to the very end here. And I'm going to put on my other clamshell. I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> if you don't leave enough wire or, you know, chain, then you're having to fool with trying to get everything on there, but... I should have just left it on, but I, I hated it. I didn't want to work with that big, long piece of chain to do this, and I didn't want to cut my, my chain either. So I'm just going to hold that, move my plier, and grab it. It is possible if you're careful. And then put my crimp bead on. Now this one, I want to get down in there. Okay, so I'm going to let gravity pull this. I don't want this to be tight. But we don't want our beads flopping around either, but you want it to be able to have movement, okay? So just hold up the end of your chain, let gravity pull this down, and crimp it. And that should be, you know, you won't have a bunch of beads flopping around, but um, you won't have this stick straight either to where it doesn't look good, to where it sticks out and looks weird, pokes out, won't bend. You don't want that. That's That looks really bad. So I'm making sure this is crimped down really good. Tugging on it, 
pretty good. I'm going to cut this off and close this up. And there is our little beaded section with our flower on it. And it looks really pretty. It is really pretty. Okay, now this the next part is going to be a lot easier. So again, we're going to take our chain here. I'm kind of wondering, yeah, I am going to use the chain. And actually, you're going to need two more clamshells and two more crimp beads. So grab those. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Okay, so this part right here is going to hang onto our chandelier. Let's go ahead and attach it on with our, uh, I'm going to use two small jump rings. I like to do it ahead of time like this because it helps me to be able to figure out how I want my second layer to lay, how long I want it to be, and how it's going to lay. So I go ahead and hook this on. Oops. Having trouble with my coordination today for sure. Okay, just like that. Same with the other side. Make sure it's not twisted up, that it's laying flat. Your necklace, I mean. Put it right on this end. And close it up. Make sure your jump rings are closed good. Okay, so there's those. Now, we're going to take this piece. And if you... Hold this with your, your, grab it by the focal and pull it. It kind of naturally is going to lay, to pull, and lay like it would if you were wearing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our ceramic beads now. And it's probably just going to take about three. So I want to pick out like three of my most colorful ones. Okay. Maybe four. I don't know. I may. We'll see how they go. How they lay. I think that's going to be too many. I actually could make a focal like this. That might be kind of interesting to do. That looks kind of pretty. We might try that. Okay. So let's do that. Let's make a little focal. So let's take our head pin. And I would like to do a fire polish bead. A um, bead cap. <laughs> I could not think of the name of it. Oh, the fire polish bead. And I wonder if one of these little, I'm sorry, the other bead cap. I was wondering if one of these little, um, little bicones would fit on here, but I don't think it will. Sad, so sad. They won't, because these head pins are actually thicker than my eye pins. So we'll do another fire polish bead. So there is a pretty dangle. That really would look good. I wasn't planning to do that, but I think we're going to. And I'm going to make a pretty wrapped loop here, I think. 90 degree angle. We're going to go up and over. I don't have a lot of wire left, but we'll go around and I should be able to wrap it at least once. I'm going to grab this with my plier. Take my short nose pliers and just wrap it around as many times as I can get it, which is probably just going to be once. But I think a wrap loop would be kind of pretty on this. So I'm just going to pull it on around if I can. Yeah, I just didn't have enough, did not quite have enough wire for a wrap loop. But And this wire is kind of thick too, so it's not real... Easy to manipulate. But I managed to get it around a couple times. I'm just going to tuck it. To tuck it, if you put your finger on the bottom of your head pin like that, it makes it a little easier. It doesn't spin quite as easy. It still spins a little, but not as easy, and you can kind of get it tucked a little bit better. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be really pretty. I like the way... This is going to kind of go down to a V, there we go, and uh, make a little point that I wasn't thinking of doing, but I think it's going to look good. Okay, so we're going to take our beading chain, we're going to put it right through here, and he's just going to hang as a pretty little, there we go. 
Now, do I want to just leave this like this or do I want to put these other beads on? I think, I know I'm going to do a couple on the side right here. I'm going to do a link to put the hook the leather on. Do I want to do that? I think I do. I really like these. I think they're so pretty. And I think it would look really good with a couple more of them on. So I'm going to take, let's do, yeah. Let's do two of the bead caps like I did on the bottom. So I'm going to do them back to back here on this focal. Just like this. Let's do a fire polish on each one. And I know this is turning out to be a long video, but this is kind of a long necklace process. So I've always got somebody that complains too long and I'm like, well, fast forward. <laughs> if you don't want to watch it all, fast forward. There's a button for that. I can't really make it any quicker. I'm sorry. People are so picky. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do another bead cap. I'm going to do the small tiger eye beads, and I'm going to try to just stick with the yellow tinned ones, I think. Just because they show up really well here. And this is going to have a lot of color because it's going to have these other beads. Now I'm going to do another bead cap facing this way. Okay, and I'm going to do one of the ceramic beads, just like that, and I'm going to do another bead cap facing the ceramic bead, and one more tiger eye with two bead caps, just like this, tiger eye, and one more. And a fire polish bead. And that is going to be it, I believe. That'll be our middle section. Is that going to look really pretty? I think that really will. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So I need a bead cap going this way. I need my yellow tiger eye. I need a bead cap. I need, let me find one more. This one's colorful. Whoops. Actually, I'm going to need another bead cap going this way. Which one did I pick? This one? Okay, we're going to do a bead cap going this way. And then a bead cap facing away. Another yellow tiger eye. Bead cap facing the bead and a fire polish. And I believe when we hold that up here, that one, this hole's messed up. I believe when we hold it up here, we're going to be able to, it's going to connect in, hopefully, and hang just like we want it to. Let me look at a fire polish bead on here, and we will look. Okay. All right, so then if I hold this up, connect it right into those, look, that's perfect. Okay, so we're going to put it on really quick. Take our clamshell, slide it right through here. Crimp bead. Here it is. Just like this. And crimp it down. Of course it came off. <laughs> oh, come on now. Goodness. Yeah, I'm having like serious issues today with my coordination. I have better days than others. And today is, there we go, not one of the best. Okay, crimped it down, pull it, make sure it's tight, not going to come off. 
and close up the clamshell. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just leaving the long chain on this time. So hopefully it'll be a little bit better and easier to do. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this on. Here's my crimp. Okay, slide it all down. Let gravity kind of do its work. And... Don't um, squeeze it tight. Just let it hang kind of loose. That's how you want it to be. You don't want it to be super tight. And go ahead and crimp your crimp bee. Okay. And then let me get in the other side here. Make sure it's crimped really good. Don't want anything coming apart. And we're going to go right in here and cut this off. Okay, there we go. Wow, I like the way this came together. Um, this is going to be really pretty. So I'm going to hook this right on with a jump ring. Okay, did I hook that to the wrong one? I sure did. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm about half with it today. Um, apparently, <laughs> what I'm thinking, I drove all day yesterday, and it seemed like the longest drive home for some reason. I don't know why. There we go. Um, and I hate, I kind of, it's an easy drive, but yet it's a pain of a drive because for a lot of the drive, the speed limit's only 60. <laughs> and that's hard for me, guys. I mean, it's really hard for me. When I know I've got to drive six and a half hours and get somewhere, I want to drive at least 70. So, but there that is. Okay, that turned out beautifully. Now we're going to make a link to go right here. So you need two eye pins. We are going to do, yeah, these little guys will fit on these eye pins. I'm going to do one of those, the little bicone. I love them. This bead cap, this bead, um, this bead cap, and one more bicone. That one doesn't want to go. That one doesn't want to go. Come on. Oh my goodness, seriously. <laughs> Try this one. I know they will. There we go. <laughs> just have to find the right one. Okay, we're just going to make a loop. I'm going to roll this back. I'm going to trim it just a tad. Like that. I'm going to roll it back. And make sure your loop is closed really good. Okay, we're going to do one more of those. Hopefully I can find two bicones that will go on there. Do I have any more of these? I don't know if there was more. Yeah, there's a ton more in this package. Let me dump some more of these out. So I've got a little bit bigger of a pull because... <laughs> They're not wanting to go. There we go. Okay, bicone, bead cap, ceramic bead, bead cap, bicone. There we go. Roll this back.
I'm just going to hook this right on here, just like that. Hook it right on the other side. Okay, so there we have the main part. Now we're just going to hook a little bit of leather on here and we're going to be done, I promise. So I'm going to make a barrel knot. Now guys, I'm not real accomplished at barrel knots, but it's not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to take this. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this leather. I'm going to move up about... Okay guys, so now we're going to finish this necklace. So we are going to make a barrel knot. So we're just going to loop our leather through here. I'm going up about this far. I want to make sure I have enough room to make my knot. <laughs> I'm not really accomplished at barrel knots, so I may be using a little too much leather, but we're going to take that chance. So you put your noodle in between the two pieces of leather, and I'm going to wrap to the left with this one. I'm going one. two, three, and I'm going around four whole wraps, okay? Then I'm going to take my piece, I'll scoot this noodle up, I'm going to go up through the bottom, just like this, and then I'm just going to go ahead and, okay, so my camera quit recording, it's been a day. <laughs> But anyway, I am just inserting this um, up the middle of the tube for my barrel bead, or my barrel knot. Goodness gracious. All right, and I'm just going to tighten that down, and hopefully it works, because like I said, I'm not the best at barrel knots, but that's okay. As long as it looks decent, I'm happy with it. And that looks pretty good, actually, for a barrel knot. Go figure. All right, so we're gonna cut this off. Cut this little knot off right here. And there is our little barrel knot. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So you wanna figure out how long you want this necklace to be. Kinda hold it up on yourself. And let me see. So mine, if I cut it right at where I would like to have it hang on me, it's about 10 inches. So I'm going to do about 13 inches so I have another uh, enough room to tie the knot on the other side <laughs> because that's important. So there we have that. And I'm just going to take the ring here and I'm going to do another knot. So I'm going to come down here about, oh, about the 3 inches, about the same length as my other one. And I'm going to put my noodle here. Now I want to put my ring on, so I'm going to go ahead and do the ring so it will be on the knot. So I'm going to put it in the bend down here, okay? And I'm going to bend this where I want it. I'm going to go up just a bit. That should be plenty of room. I'm going to put my noodle in here, just like this, and hold this together. And then I'm going to wrap. So one, two, nope, I wrapped the wrong way. You got to do at the top and then go down. One, two, three, and I like to go around four times. I don't know, it just makes me feel like it's more secure. Okay, I'm going to put this, this is a little fiddly with that little thing right there, the ring right there, but I'm going to go up through the noodle with my little piece and I probably should have left more but I didn't want to waste a lot of this leather so I'm just going to insert it right up through there once you get it up through your knot you're okay so then I can just pull it and tighten my knot very carefully I do this carefully you don't want to pull too fast or too hard. You just can't. It's a tug. It's a pull and tug. Pull and tug. <laughs> until your knot is exactly like you want it. Now, that's not the greatest one, but it's really pretty decent. I mean, <laughs> like I said, I'm not a barrel knot girl. I'm not very good at them. 
but it's tight and so I'm happy. So we're gonna cut it off. And there is our little um, loop. Oh no, don't, don't come undone. It was tight. Oh no. Okay, well I may have to fix that here in a minute. Fix my barrel knot down, but anyway, there we go. So we're gonna do the other side. I'm going to put a little glue on them because I don't entirely trust them anyway. <laughs> so I will put a little glue on that one and tighten it down. But let's do the other side. So again, we're just going to make our loop. And this little, um, this loop is just a tad bit smaller than my other one. I didn't have quite as much left. So let me cut this leather at a point so I can get it through there. There we go. Okay. And I really like this leather, guys. I mean, it seems to knot up really nicely. It's um, very supple and soft. I like it. Okay, I'm going to put my noodle in. Just like this. Actually, I'm going to turn it that way. There we go. Okay, put my noodle in. Hold it where I need it to be, and I'm going to go one two, three, and I'm not going to go around a, well, I hate not to, I just feel, I feel like it's more secure, and I always end up with a bunch left over anyway when I get this up through here, so I'm just going to take it through, under and up, my noodle, and then as long as I can pull the noodle up, and still get the end of the, there we go. Yeah, that's all we need is just that end out. And again, I'm just going to very slowly pull it down and tighten it. The push and pull, pull and tug motion. Tug on one till it's tight, and then I tug on the other side. Okay. That one's not as good as the other side, but I'm keeping this necklace, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm just not the best at the barrel knot, but I try. All right, so there's that one. We're going to cut it off right there. Okay, and then go on up. I'm going to make this the same length is the other one so I want to pull it up here and leave about another probably three inches here four inches just to be safe and I'm going to try to get this exact so I'm going to put these together so I'm going to try to make my loop right or my bend right about there so let's put this guy on okay and then make my bend, put my noodle in, and wrap. One, two, three, and four times around. And I'm going to come down and go up through the bottom. Just like this, right up through my noodle and out the top. Okay, and then I'll pull my noodle out and gently push and pull until I get my knot tight and down where I want it. And I'm not real, um, you know, if my barrel knot turns out halfway decent, I'm a happy girl. I'll get better at them, I guess, the more I do them, but I've not been doing them very long. So there that one is. I'm going to cut it off. And there we have our end. So I am going to take a small jump ring right here. And I'm going to hook my lobster on. I've got my leather tangled up in my pliers right there. Okay, this small jump ring. I'm going to hook my lobster on with this one. And 
and close it right up. Just like this. Okay. And there is our finished necklace. So let me stick this on a form and I will be right back to show it to you. Okay, guys, so here it is. Excuse the mess in the background, but I think this turned out pretty, pretty, pretty good. I like it. Um, it's got a lot of detail to it. So here is our, our flower with our little dangles, and it goes up, and here's our middle piece, and I'm glad I did that that way. I really like the way that hangs, and it goes on up to our leather. So... I really like this piece. It's very boho, very um, kind of eclectic and just different. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, like I said, I will link everything um, in the description box below. I'll link my website and everything. And most of these things are on my website, or at least some of them. The flowers and the ceramic beads are. And the um, beading chain and some of the bead caps and stuff. So anyway, you guys have a great rest of the day. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.